was having a cool day. I, I was having a pretty good time. My daughter's called me from uh, some academy. I got on my phone. Uh, they called me from Southern Academy. My daughter, too. You know, she know how I am. Um, but she called me and she telling me that, you know, they still passing out these, uh, these brochures and stuff like that to, uh, to try to influence people to get the shot. Now, I understand where, where a lot of people are at. They, they want to be protected. They, 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 they want to make sure everything is cool. You know, um, take precautions. You feel me? I understand. At the same time, I don't want that shit. And my children ain't going to get that shit. I had to call. I felt the need to call the school and tell them, like, yo, look here. I get, I get where y'all at with this. At the same time, miss me with all that. Not everybody in this world is easily conformed. You know what I mean? Not everybody in this world is just going to, you know, just take a piece of paper and be like, oh, this is a good idea or this is something I want to do. You know, that, like, I, I, y'all got stuff backwards, okay? Okay, so just because everybody else or the majority or whatever is doing this don't mean that I'm following suit with this, okay? I'm not going to sit up there and let you say that you're protecting me, but then you're giving me that, that, that you're going to give me something. Like, 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 that's a part of the sickness, like, or whatever. Or, like, that don't make sense to me, okay? So, like, real talk, hey, I'm all for, I'm, I'm all for y'all making y'all own decision. I support you, if you, you know, uh, I mean, it's, I mean, I don't support you getting a shot. But, you know, uh, uh, you know, I commend you for being your home. You know, at the same time, you know what, keep them ideas, them, them, them worldly ideas, and that conformity attitude away from me and my family. We don't want shots. We don't need no vaccine. Okay? We don't need that shit. But my babies, if I get sick, I'll tell you this. If I get sick, I'm, I'm at this, uh, I'm, I'm really folded it's like this. Okay? If I get sick from some OD, you heard? Then, then, uh, look at this. I will get the treatment. I won't get the shot. You understand? Y'all niggas, if y'all ain't, hey, 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 I don't care if they gotta hook me up to the machine. Okay? And I die. You understand? That's where I'm at right now. That's my faith. Okay? My no is no until I choose otherwise. Okay? And, and y'all sitting up here trying to force my and sway me and my family? Y'all got me out of my mother. You got me off my rocker. Okay? You got your rabbit ass mind. Listen to me. Anybody come around me talking about shots? Okay? Talking about vaccines? You about to lose a, you about to lose a comrade. You about to lose a, a ally. Look, don't look. Tell me all the shit that you're willing to do for yourself, but don't you dare get smart or cop an attitude with me because I don't believe in vaccinating myself with some fucking male feedies or whatever else is the part of the components of that shit. Like I don't want it. Okay, I don't care if it's part COVID or part part vaccine. Uh, I don't care. All right. Leave me be. Leave my family alone. Don't give my don't give my children no conversation. Don't give my children or myself. Don't try to offer that shit to me. Okay? I do not believe in this. Alright? Uh, all due respect. You know what I mean? I just have to get that off my chest and let y'all people know. You know, my people know. You know what I'm saying? That's where I stand. I'm all good if you got it. Good for you. But for me and mine, my faith to sustain, I don't know. Okay? I'm healthy. I'm fine. I ain't old. You know what I'm saying? My children is fine. They healthy. They strong. Okay? I don't need no male fees uh, or no part vaccine or part COVID in my system. You understand? I'm not going to be swayed. In my system. You understand? I'm not going to be swayed. Cut the shit. To replace paper money and coins. It will also give the Communist Party spending their money. 
And that opens the door for unprecedented government control. George Thomas has the story. The Chinese were the first in the world to invent paper money back in the 7th century. Now, more than 1,400 years later, China is again on the cusp of creating a new form of government currency that some say could pose a serious economic threat to America and the West. China is about to launch one of the most revolutionary financial projects in the world. They're not cryptocurrencies. Uh, they're not so-called staple coins. In effect, they are uh, the national uh, physical currency of a country just represented in a digital form. Eric Bethel is the former U.S. executive director of the World Bank. Bitcoin near record highs, crossing 23,000. He says while the world fixates on private cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. The digital yuan isn't a payment system. It's actual money. Beijing is busy building a digital version of its own currency, the yuan, also known as the renminbi, to control its citizens and eventually threaten the dominance of the U.S. dollar. They've pretty much created all of the building blocks uh, that will allow a central bank digital currency to, to flourish. And Yaya Fanusi, a former economic and counterterrorism analyst in the CIA, says China's goal is to replace cash with a digital currency that's controlled by the communist government's central bank. China has said for a while that it expects to pretty much be a cashless society in the future. So the idea is that cash notes, uh, coins will no longer be around and that people will be using uh, digital currency that's going to be in their wallets. That digital currency will also be issued by the government bank, allowing what Congressman Michael McCall, the top Republican on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, says is unprecedented access are bracing for persecution by the extremist group. Jennifer Wishon explains. Since May, the Taliban has seized about a quarter of Afghanistan's districts. Now Christians are asking for prayer as they and other religious minorities find themselves easy targets of extremists. The withdrawal will be these vulnerable communities even more vulnerable. It's as simple as that. Security conditions have failed religious minorities as Islamic serious attack, attack by extremist groups, particularly ISIS-K um, and the Taliban. So far, the U.S.-Afghan deal hasn't led to peace. Religious freedom advocates hope keeping a spotlight on the situation. Advocacy for Open Doors USA, a ministry to the persecuted church. He joins us now for, to have you on the show. Uh, you know very well that Christianity it looks like uh, for them, and how do they practice their faith? There is a church there. The Christian community in Afghanistan is largely a church made up of converts from Islam. There are some more traditional Christian groups there as well. But it's largely an underground church, and I have to often meet secretly. Um, many people never mention that they've converted to Christian. Oh, this is a community that's all based, that's been created over the last few years for this community to sort of openly engage with Christians. Now. Chris crossing the country weeks after the United States invaded uh, this country right now as they continue to march across the country. I, I think my concern, well, of course, for Christians, but Baha'is, the Sikhs, as we just heard, all face sort of totalitarian in and of itself we're going to see major atrocities against religious minorities. survey of 72 cities showing homicide up nearly 20 percent in chicago religious history was made in abu dhabi last year when the document on human fraternity was signed by pope francis and dr ahmed el tayyip and Imam of Al Azhar. It called for tolerance, universal peace, and the reconciliation of all faiths. Embodying this agreement, this year construction will start on a project called the Abrahamic Family House on Sadiat Island. Due for completion in 2022, the site will house a church, a mosque, and a synagogue. St. Andrew's Anglican Church in Abu Dhabi is made up of more than 50 congregations of 40 nationalities, with average weekly visitors of around 15,000 worshippers. Its canon Paul Burt says the project in Abu Dhabi symbolizes a hugely exciting union of faith, particularly for the region's youth. Religion is still indeed a foundational fact in the lives of most people, in fact almost all people. And young people are excited about uh, their lives 
said about the future, and so they are full of optimism and excitement. And uh, by participating in a, in a project like this, I think you'll find that it will be led by young people. Our world is, uh, appears to be sliding into separation and division, concentrating on what divides people rather than what, than what unites them. And uh, by concentrating on that, we are saying uh, that this is a vital contribution to the world community at this time. Sheikh Dr. Faraz Ali Mustafa is an imam and preacher at the UAE's Al Farouk Omar bin Al Khattab Mosque and Center. He's passionate about religious inclusion and tolerance and encourages people of all faiths to visit his organization so they can learn more from each other. The culture of love is present in all divine laws. Through dialogue and music. This last day's one world, the one world, equals out with his name. About the attacks. This is the second time that President Biden has ordered airstrikes in this threatened Christian groups are vehicle attacks against U.S. Out of that breaking news overnight, President Biden mission saying it's in retaliation for recent attacks. This is the second time that President Biden has ordered airstrikes in this region. We are told that this is meant to send a very clear and direct message. Defense said the targets were selected because these facilities are utilized by Iran-backed militias that are engaged in unmanned aerial vehicle attacks against U.S. personnel and facilities in Iraq. Iraqi military spokesman issued a strong statement. We condemn the U.S. air attack that targeted a site last night on the Iraqi-Syrian border, which represents a blatant and unacceptable violation of Iraqi sovereignty and Iraqi national security in accordance with all international conventions. Two groups backed by Iran were targeted, Kataib Hezbollah and Kataib Saeed al-Shahada. Reaction from the groups was swift. Qatar as Sayyid al-Shahada have actually reacted very strongly from 